Chapter 40 of Zhang Henshui's Golden Fen Family No matter who wins or loses, there is a secret order of fighting cards and rewards. Young and old gather together to have a drink in the new house. The old woman mumbled all the way in, muttering, Another daredevil. I didn't even ask him what his last name was. He said his last name was Jin. I said a few words and ran him away. Bai Lian Hua asked, Is he a man in his twenties wearing foreign clothes? As he said this, he ran out of the house. The old lady said, No, she's actually wearing a foreign dress. White Lotus and her daughter cried out in unison. Bai Lian Hua said, She probably hasn't gone far, right? Go and invite her back. Her mother, Grandma Lee, said, Where is she? If she goes to invite others, they won't come. Just go there. Why do you offend someone for nothing? Okay? Bai Lian Hua thought about it. She didn't even bother to change her clothes. She asked the old lady if she was going to the south end. After leaving the gate, she hurriedly chased her to the south end. It happened that Yan Shi was listless, walking step by step with his hands in his pockets, and he hadn't hired a car yet. Bai Lian Hua recognized the figure behind him and even called Qi several times. As soon as Yan Shi stopped, Bai Lian Hua stepped forward, held Yan Shi's hand and said with a smile, I'm so sorry. The old woman my family hired doesn't know anything. She thought she was looking for our brother. Yan Shi hasn't done anything yet. In reply, someone from behind shouted, Miss, is Master Qi here? Bai Lian Hua said, He is here. When Grandma Li heard about it, she rushed over and said to Yan Shi with a smile, Master Qi, I'm really sorry. I didn't know Master Qi was willing to come here. Don't be offended. Please come and sit in our house. It's just that the house is a bit dirty. Bai Lian Hua said with a smile, People won't come to our house and knock on the door if it's dirty. Mr. Qi, do you think so? Mr. Qi really thought I was not at home, so he left. Is it worth getting angry with my mother? Grandma Li said, Let me go in front. It's dark in this alley. It's not easy to walk. Yan Shi was unhappy at first, but now she was surrounded by her mother and daughter. She was calling Master Qi from left to right, and her anger turned into smoke. In addition, the white lotus clung to his two hands, which were warm and soft. No matter what, he couldn't be angry in front of others. He could only smile and say, I didn't say anything. You guys said sorry to me, but you made me feel embarrassed. Bai Lian Hua said, Let's go, we have something to say at home. While saying this, she took Yan Shi's hand. Hands, follow Grandma Li all the way home. When he got home, he was led directly to Bai Lian Hua's room to sit down. After all, Bai Lian Hua is from the south. The furnishings in the room are all southern style white lacquered furniture. Although the bed is not made of copper, it is a new style white lacquered canopy bed. The tent is hung with white linen, the autumn quilt is made of white silk, and the white velvet rug is all white, which is very gratifying. Yin smiled and said, No wonder your name is Bai Lian Hua. Entering your house is like entering a snowdrift. Bai Lian Hua pursed her lips and smiled, and then said, Your mansion is almost the same as the palace. We don't dare to do it here. No matter how well it is arranged, it must be clean before you dare to invite Master Qi. You deserve to be beaten for what you said. You are the one who says the house is dirty, but you are the one who says it is clean. Dirty? Bai Lian Hua said with a smile, It's just a polite word, but compared to your mansion, it's very dirty. As he said this, he held Yan Shi's hand and stayed together. Sit down on the edge of the bed. Yan Shi smiled and said, It doesn't matter if I come tomorrow, why do you have to drag me in? Bai Lian Hua said with a smile, You are a rare person. When you come, I will ask you to go back. How can we live in peace? You. Have you had dinner? Yan Shi said, Yes. It's just because I have nothing to do after dinner that I came to talk to you. Bai Lian Hua said, That's good. Just go and talk for a while. Master Qi, do you know how to pick up dragons? I always play this game when I come to Beijing. Yan Shi said, I know a little bit about it, but if I don't pick it up well, I may not be your match. Lian Hua smiled and said, That's great, let's do it. So I took out a refined yellow pine box from the glass cabinet and opened the lid to reveal a pair of dental cards. She flopped onto the table and pulled Yan Shi to sit on the chair. I moved a stool which was only separated from the Yangtze chair by a corner of the table, and sat down like this. Turn over the cards, shuffle them, and give each person half. 
Yan Shi put his hand on the 16 cards and said, What are we betting on? Bai Lian Hua said, Do I have the courage to bet money with Master Qi? Yan Shi said, You don't have to bet money, no matter how much you gamble, anything is fine. Bai Lian Hua said, What are you betting on? Whoever loses should hit the palm of his hand three times. I have two bottles of fruit wine at home. Let's open one bottle and drink it. Whoever loses should drink a glass of wine. It's been too long. I have an idea. If I lose, I'll give you a handkerchief. I'll give it to you tomorrow. At this point, he gently touched Bai Lian Hua's ear. He said something. Bai Lian Hua turned around, stood up, stepped back, and said with a smile, I won't come, I won't come. Grandma Lee just walked in and said, You are just playing with Master Qi. Why don't you come? Bai Lian Hua puffed up her lips and said with a smile, You don't know, he is so pretentious. Seeing this situation, Grandma Lee expected that Yan Shi would take advantage of Bai Lian Hua. He smiled and said, How can Mr. Qi be so pretentious? You are the only one who is so pretentious. Yan Shi smiled and said, I'm not here for food, so you don't have to worry about it. When Grandma Lee heard about it, she poured a cup of tea and put it in front of Yan Shi and left. Bai Lian Hua was playing catch up with Yan Shi. When she looked back and saw that no one was there, she took a dental card and tapped it on Yan Shi's finger. He smiled and said, What are you talking about? I have never heard anyone punishing people like this. Yan Shi said, Why not? Losing money depends on the individual, and this also depends on the individual. Bai Lian Hua stood up, smiled and said, You still want to say it? If you say it again, we won't come. Yan Shi said, I won't say anything, but if you lose, what will be the punishment for you? Bai Lian Hua said, If I lose, I will sing a song for you, okay? Yan Shi said, No, I can sing it myself. What do you want me to sing? Bai Lian Hua said, Ahum, don't make things difficult for me. I'm very tired at home. I feel better now, but you're going to make trouble again. Yan Shi said, Tell me what you're tired of. I'd like to hear the details. Bai Lian Hua said, You want to ask me what's on my mind? I have a lot of things on my mind. My name really brings out what's on my mind. Yan Shi said, I'm a little confused by what you said. What's going on in your heart? Does it have anything to do with your name? Bai Lian Hua said, Think about it. Doesn't the white lotus look beautiful on the outside? But with the lotus seeds, aren't the lotus seeds also delicious? You can't eat it unless you pick it. If you don't pick it, you will suffer a lot. Many people are just looking at the lotus flowers and eating the lotus seeds. I'm afraid there are no people who put much effort into eating the lotus seeds. Yan Shi said, with a smile. What you said was very elegant. But when I saw you entertaining these people at the card game last night, I knew you were feeling miserable. You are really not good at selling money based on your skills these days. Bai Lian Hua said, that's not it. I want to have 10,000 or 8,000 yuan on hand. I would rather go back to the countryside and buy a few hectares of land to plant. Who will do the work on this stage? As an opera singer, no matter how popular you are, it is still winter. It's hard enough whether it's March or summer. If you're alive, you have to eat, so why bother working so hard for money? Yan Shi said with a smile, It's really rare for you to be so open-minded. But don't you think about it. Farming is not a girl's business. If you really want to farm, it will be even more difficult than singing in the summer. Son, when I talk about farming, I don't mean to do it myself. I just buy the land and let others do it. Yan Shi smiled and said, Can you just eat a few acres of land and be done with it? Bye Bai Lian Hua smiled and said, What can't you do? Country people can live with just two hectares of land. Yangtze said with a smile, You haven't understood what I said. I mean that a girl's family can't live a lifetime anyway, so she has to follow a man. If you are a girl now, will you still be a girl for the rest of your life? Bai Lian Hua said, Why not? I plan to be a girl for the rest of my life. Yan Shi said with a smile, What are you going to do if someone doesn't allow you to be a girl? Bai Lian Hua said with a smile, Nonsense, there is no such thing. Even my mother can't control it, let alone others. Yan Shi said, For example, now we need a young man with a good temperament. He's always flattering you. What are you going to do to him? Do you want to be a girl forever? Bai Lian Hua picked up the teacup and raised it, saying with a smile, I'll pour the tea on you. He smiled and said, What are you talking about? I didn't say anything to offend you. So why are you pouring tea on me? 
Bai Lian Hua smiled and said, You still said you didn't offend me? If there is a third person here, can you listen? When you say this, you are completely taking advantage of me. Yan Shi smiled and said, Do you think the young master I'm talking about is myself? That's totally wrong. I am not a young man. I am not a good person and have a bad temperament. How could the person I was talking to be right at all? Bai Lian Hua smiled and said, Come on, let's not say these words anymore. Let's just pick up the dragon. Yan Shi shuffled the cards with a smile and continued to pick up dragons. Five times in a row, Bai Lian Hua lost three times. At first, Bai Lian Hua said that a win would equal a loss. On the fifth time, Yan Shi pressed the cards and said, Stop picking it up. If this card doesn't settle, I won't do it. Bai Lian Hua said, If you don't do it, you will be pulled down. Anyway, I won't suffer. Yan Shi smiled and said, You are using such cunning tactics in front of me. Aren't you afraid that I will use your tricks in the future? Bai Lian Hua smiled and said, I didn't use any tricks. Even if I did, I can't get past your seventh master. When he said that, he ran towards the suite of this house. Yan Shi smiled and said, Let me see how your house is like here. When he said that, he also chased after him. Bai Lian Hua giggled a few times in the room, held Yan Shi's back with both hands, and pushed him out. While combing the loosened temples with his hands, he looked at Yan Shi, smiled, and said, This is really unreasonable. Yan Shi smiled and said, This is the right I deserve as a winner. What if you win? Can you also let me go? Bai Lian Hua puffed up her mouth and said, Hey M, if you want to make trouble like this, I won't come. Next time, I won't pick up the fight with you. Yan Shi smiled and said, Really? I won't come next time. Your place is Zhao Quanjian's bet. You can win or lose. This is really unreasonable. Bai Lian Hua smiled and said, You are here as a guest, not to gamble. If you want to say that gambling here is irregular, I'm not afraid of you. Yan Shi said, I've been sitting here for a long time, so I'm leaving too. As he said that, he stood up and looked like he was about to leave. Bai Lian Hua grabbed his sleeve and said with a smile, Excuse me, do you really want to quarrel with me? Yan Shi smiled and said, First you were very tough, but now I have to leave, and you are afraid of offending me. Whether you do good or evil is all your responsibility. Bai Lian Hua smiled and said, Are you saying that you are unyielding? What am I tough about? How long and tough? I dare not disobey what Master Qi said. Yan Shi saw that what she said was a bit pitiful, and couldn't bear to leave anymore, so she held her hand and sat down together with a smile. Grandma Li brought in a plate on the left and a plate on the right, and brought in many things, such as cooked chestnuts, fried almonds, hazelnuts, peanuts, tangerine peel, plums, etc., and set a table. Grandma Li smiled and said, Master Qi, you can use it casually. There is nothing good, just to express our feelings. Yan Shi smiled and said, When I saw these things, I remembered one thing. Bai Lian Hua said, You, what do you remember? Yan Shi said, When I was four or five years old, I often played with the children and girls at home. I stole a lot of small soy sauce dishes and small wine glasses from the kitchen and hid them in the corridor. The cook knew about it, but he didn't dare to stop us, and he was afraid that we would beat him up, so he always yelled at the little girls. As for the soy sauce dish, it was just melon seeds, peanuts, candy balls and biscuits. When I look at them now, they look a bit like those days. But the dishes are bigger and the people are bigger. Grandma Lee said, with a smile, those are the things for young men like you. Children, how can children play with things like that? I picked up a few small tiles and put a handful of soil on them, and everyone squatted on the corner of the wall to put the wine. Yan Shi smiled and said, when we were young, we had wine and fun. We didn't care about the food, we just wanted to make it lively. Bai Lian Hua said with a smile, When Master Qi came here for the second time, we also made a scene. Grandma Li said, Then why? Bai Lian Hua said, Didn't Master Qi say that he would be happy as long as it was fun? All three of them laughed. This conversation and laughter finally made Yan Shi extremely happy, and then she went home happily. As soon as he walked out of the gate, a car happened to stop at the door. Yan Shi was shocked and thought, is there a second Jin Qi coming to hold the white lotus? While he was hesitating outside the gate, as soon as the car door opened, a man jumped down and grabbed Yan Shi. He said, if I didn't look for it, I would find you as soon as I looked. When Yan Shi looked, it was Zhao Menji Wan. 
Yan Shi smiled and said, You are so weird. How did you know I'm here? Zhao Menjiwan said, I have a miraculous calculation, and I figured you out in one glance. Yan Shi said, It may not be a miraculous calculation, but your detective skills, I'm quite impressed. How did you detect me coming here? Zhao Menjiwan said, Then you don't have to worry about me. I'll tell you, it won't work the second time. Yan Shi said, I don't care about that. Let me ask you, why did you come to me? Zhao Menjiwan said with a smile, There is a good opportunity, you can't miss it. Your boss is entertaining guests at the small mansion tonight. Everyone who comes is welcome. I suggest that, you go too. It's 9 o'clock, it's time. Yan Shi said, I won't go, I have a date. Zhao Menjiwan said, Whether you have a date or not, you have to go. You don't know, said Zhao Menjiwan, It's a lot of inconvenience for me to go. Zhao Menjiwan said, It's precisely because of the inconvenience that I have to go. Yan Shi smiled and said, I understand what you said, you are doing me a favor. The boss ordered you to lead me there. Zhao Menjiwan said, You just guessed. Yan Shi said, I can't go. My sister-in-law asked me for help during the day. It's good. I've become a traitor. Zhao Menjiwan said, You are really a fool. In this age, you have to be versatile and don't offend anyone, and you can't do it for others. I heard it all. Your sister-in-law has my Shang, who has a good relationship with you. She is trying her best to supervise you and not let you get close. Why do you still care about her? Yan Shi smiled and said, Nonsense. How can such a thing happen? The two of them were standing in front of the car door talking. At this time, Yan Shi was bumped by the car, causing him to wake up. He and Zhao Menjiwan were sitting in the car together. The car was speeding like lightning. They had left Bai Lian Hua's house for a long time. Yan Shi smiled and said, I was really absent-minded. I got into the car in a daze. I had no idea where we were going. Zhao Menjiwan said, Where are we going? Just to your sister-in-law's house. Yan Shi said, No, no, you should send me back. I won't go today. Zhao Menjiwan said, I don't care whether you go or not. My car will go all the way to your new sister-in-law's place. She smiled and said, You are not treating someone on behalf of others. It is simply kidnapping. Zhao Menjiwan said, Kidnapping is just kidnapping. Here we are. Please get out of the car. The car stopped, and the driver rushed to open the car door. Zhao Menjiwan held on. Yangtze, get out of the car all the way. Yan Shi looked and saw two red painted gates with a huge white ball lampshade hanging upside down on them. Under the light, a golden plaque was illuminated with the two big characters' golden house written on it. There were three or four cars and several rickshaws parked in a row in front of the gate. When the car rang, a very old servant came out of the gatehouse next to it and stood aside, standing respectfully. Yan Shi thought to himself, the eldest brother is also very confused. How can he be so extravagant? If the two old people knew about this, they would definitely get angry. This is simply opening a big house, not living in a small house? Zhao Menjiwan smiled and said, Look at the pomp at his gate. It's not wrong, right? Let's go in. As he said that, he pulled Yan Shi's hand and rushed in. Yan Shi said, Don't pull. I'll go in with you. What kind of a scene is it to pull and tug? Zhao Menjiwan walked in front, and Yan Shi followed, entering two courtyards before reaching the last building. There were bright silver lights and brilliant red pillars, and laughter and chatter were everywhere. Zhao Menjiwan shouted first, New grandmother, prepare a gift for the meeting. The younger brother-in-law is here to meet the older sister-in-law. As he said that, he went up to the house to help him, and pulled the air door. He saw people squeezed inside, and someone came out to greet him. Yan Shi looked and saw that it was Feng Ju's closest friends, Zhu Yishi and Li Wairan. The two of them walked out, shook Yan Shi's hand, and said with a smile, We called everywhere and finally found you. We specially asked Lao Zhao to drive a special car to pick you up. This is enough of a compliment. Zhao Menjiwan said, Don't shout, don't shout. If you say that, he will see through my trick. As everyone talked, they walked into the house and saw Liu Baoshan and Feng Ju sitting on a sofa chair. There was also a hairdresser of 18 or 19 years old, wearing a bean green velvet Qian Sam, standing at the head of the sofa chair with her hands crossed. Before Yangtze said anything, Feng Ju stood up and pointed at Yangtze and said to her with a smile, This is our seventh child. The woman bowed. 
Yangtze knew that this was the new sister-in-law, Miss Wangxiang. No younger brother-in-law would be polite to the older sister-in-law, first, so he took off his hat and bowed to her, but he couldn't say how to address her, so he could only laugh dryly at her. Xiao Menjiwan said, Grandma, look how polite this younger brother-in-law is. You should give him a little gift to be worthy of him. Otherwise, this older child will be embarrassed. Wang Xiang didn't feel anything when she met Feng Zhu's friends, but she felt a little embarrassed when she met Feng Zhu's brothers, who were finally a family. But Zhao Menjiwan started joking as soon as he entered the door, making it difficult to respond or ignore him, so he had to stand there with a smile. Yangtze was already in a difficult position to speak, and Wang Xiang was silent now, and the two of them were just like a pair of people acting in a movie. Fortunately, Feng Zhu knew what was going on, so he interrupted and said to Zhao Menjiwan with a smile, Your joke is too depressing. She is not the type who can say polite words. As for Lao Qi, he can speak in an orderly manner when he meets acquaintances. When he meets strangers, he is like a grown-up girl and doesn't know what to say. At this moment, Wan Shang called Wang Ma to pour tea. When no one was there, she poured a cup of tea from the tea table and handed it to Yan Shi's tea table with both hands, saying with a smile, Drink tea. Yan Shi leaned forward and took the teacup. He said, with a smile, We are family. Do we need to be polite? This is also my home. Li Wiren said with a smile, Brother Feng Ju, you said that Lao Qi can't speak when he meets strangers. Look at what he said just now. It's very decent. Yan Shi said with a smile, What do you mean by decent or not? Isn't this the truth? Wan Shang stood beside the sofa chair where Feng Ju was sitting, looked at Feng Ju, then looked at Yan Shi, and then lowered her head and spoke softly to Feng Ju. Feng Jiang said loudly, You are going to say stupid things again. They are brothers. How can they not look alike? Wang Xiang said, You are wrong. Brothers also have many differences in appearance. Zhu Yishi shook his head and said with a smile, New Grandma, you are really good. It hasn't been long since you came here, but you know how to be pedantic. Look, you even use the word between. This can only be attributed to the good teaching of our uncle. Feng Zhu smiled and said, The word between is also very common. How can this be considered pedantic? Zhu Yishi Yishi said, Although the two words in between are very ordinary, in the final analysis, it cannot be regarded as the new sister-in-law's efforts to move up the social ladder. This is a glimpse, and the whole picture is clear. Wang Xiang smiled and said, Mr. Zhu is a very kind person, but he has a bad mouth and likes to talk nonsense. Zhu Yishi said, This is a compliment to you. How can you say that I am wrong? Wang Xiang said, It's really late. You must be hungry. Let's go eat. So Feng Zhu led the way in front, around the glass lattice corridor, and led them to a long living room next to it. Outside the living room, there is a corridor that completely covers the glass lattice. Inside the corridor, many chrysanthemums are stacked. The electric lights illuminate the colorful and dazzling. When people walk in, there is a light fragrance. In this living room there are also mahogany carved furniture, and various chrysanthemums are placed along the table. In the middle is a marble round table, on which a set of antique porcelain cups and plates are displayed. Xiao Menjiwan said, Master, you are very particular about your daily life and diet. Look, except for the electric lights, everything in this room is antique, and the electric lights are covered with colorful gauze lampshades, so you can't tell that they are imported products. Feng Zhu said, Things like chrysanthemums are originally very delicate and elegant. They should be matched with some elegant furnishings to appear decent. If there are many foreign goods displayed in front of the flowers, and everyone eats the dishes facing each other, it can't be said that it is not good, but it seems a bit out of place. Zhu Yishi said, This is your psychological effect. We also see foreigners raising chrysanthemums in their homes. That kind of place is full of western atmosphere, which seems to be incompatible with the elegance of chrysanthemums. However, we think the chrysanthemums are still beautiful. Li Wiren said, You guys don't understand what I mean by saying this. You are too careless. When you walked into this room, didn't you pay attention to the horizontal plaque on the door? After hearing this, Zhu Yishi and Zhao Menjiwan walked out of the door and looked up. It turned out that it was cut into a fan-shaped piece of tiger skin paper, with three large characters Yi Kiazuan written on it. Zhu Yishi said, There is nothing special about this. What does it have to do with the display of chrysanthemums? Li Wiren said, 
Look at the couplet next to it. When Zhu Yushi looked at it, he saw two pieces of tiger skin paper with five character couplets written on them and pasted on the corridor pillars. On one side, there were pine trees planted to preserve the ancient beauty, and on the other side, there were chrysanthemums to enjoy the fragrance. Clapping his hands, he said, I know. This couplet is hiding the taboo of the new sister-in-law. No wonder this house is called Yi Kiazuan. Li Wiren said, Now you understand. Think about it. A small couplet has to have some relationship with the lady. So, the furnishings in this house should not be prosperous, and it should not be foreign. Wang Xiang just smiled when she heard them talk. After they finished talking, she said, The master is busy with nothing. How can he have time to deal with these unimportant things? This is also the old mister, Yang who came the day before yesterday. He said that this room should be posted with a couplet. He immediately asked someone to buy paper and asked me to grind the ink stone myself. The ink stone is big and has a lot of water. After grinding for a long time, my hands are sore and painful. He happily let the master hold the paper and write while standing. He waited until the ink was dry and we posted it before he was willing to leave. When he wrote, he read it to me word by word, as if he was very proud. This one old man, I really made him bored. Zhu Yishi said, Where is such a Mr. Yang? Feng Zhu said, Who else? It's Yang Banshan. He got a lot of nominal jobs, and he had nothing to do all day, just commenting on the wind and moon, enjoying poetry and wine, and wasting his time. He still had to find something to do when there was nothing to do, let alone there was a topic to think about. He also said that this place is very good, and asked me to treat him to a chrysanthemum pot. I said it was too early, so I pushed him away. Yan Shi said, that can't be pushed away. If he doesn't want to be invited, it's fine. If he wants to be invited, he doesn't know what politeness is. Li Wiren said, this old man is very interesting. Why don't you take advantage of this dinner tonight to invite him to have a meal? Even the master can do a favor, by the way. Feng Zhu thought about it and thought that this was right, so he asked the messenger to call to ask if Mr. Yang was at home. There was a promise that he was at home, so Feng Zhu personally answered the phone and urged him to come over. Yang Banshan was very bored at home that night, so he read a book of Tang poetry under the lamp to amuse himself. Now that he received a call and was offered wine, he was naturally very willing. He immediately took his carriage and headed for Feng Zhu's mansion. When he arrived at Feng Zhu's house, everyone had been seated for a long time. Since everyone knew each other very well, they gathered around a small round table and sat down randomly without distinguishing between host and guest. However, a seat in the front was left empty for Yang Banshan. Before Yang Banshan entered the house, people outside the glass door kept shouting, Don't mention it, the latecomers are the best, the latecomers are the best. As soon as he walked in, everyone stood up. He was wearing a bronze floral jacket with a red double-breasted waistcoat. Although it was not winter yet, he had already put on a melon-shaped hat with a little red top. The strangest thing was that he was holding a large Jean Fay bamboo folding fan in his hand, and the few sparse pale beards on his mouth were combed upside down. Li Wiren said with a smile, It's been a long time since I last saw Yang Banshan. You look more relaxed and relaxed now. You are still strong and healthy. Yang Banshan gently opened his folding fan, shook it twice, and said with a smile, The loose belt and light fur coat are like Yang Shuzi, the silk scarf and feather fan are like Wuxiang Hu. Yan Shi said with a smile, Yang Banshan's poetic inspiration is really stronger than anyone else. I have been looking for an opportunity to talk to you for a long time, but I have never been able to do so. As he spoke, he offered him a seat. Yang Banshan sat in the first seat without any hesitation. There was an empty seat next to him. He knocked the chair with his folding fan, and said, Seventh brother, come and sit here, come and sit here. Yan Shi heard this and really sat over. Yang Banshan patted his shoulder and asked, How old are you this year? Yan Shi smiled and said, 18 years old. Yang Banshan said, Great, this is really what people nowadays call the golden age. Are you engaged? Yan Shi smiled and said, How is it? Mr. Yang asked me this question, do you want to drink my winter melon soup? Yang Banshan said, you deserve to be beaten for saying this. You new people have caught up with the era of reform. It's just the right time for you to engage in the affairs of talented men and beautiful women and find your own spouse. 
Besides, now you can get engaged openly and honestly, and there is no need to go to the back garden in the middle of the night. You said you want me to be a matchmaker, isn't that unfair to me, an old man? Yan Shi smiled and said, that's not true. Drinking winter melon soup does not necessarily mean being a matchmaker in the old style. Even the matchmaker in the new style of marriage can be considered drinking winter melon soup. Yang Banshan stroked his beard with his left hand and nodded twice, saying, that makes sense. If you really want to, I can introduce you to someone. While listening to him, Yan Shi reached out to take the wine pot and poured a glass of wine into the old man's glass. He smiled and said, I'll pour you a glass as a deposit. When the matter is settled in the future, you can thank the matchmaker. Yang Banshan said, Okay, I'll take your deposit first. He picked up the glass, drank the wine in one gulp with a sound, and took a look at the cup in front of the people at the table. Wang Xiang and Feng Zhu sat at the head of the table, with a wine pot in front of them. Wang Xiang stood up with the wine pot, smiled at Yang Banshan, and said, Old sir, I toast you a glass. Yang Banshan pressed the wine glass with his left hand, took the folding fan in his right hand, knocked it on the table, stretched his head and smiled. The new grandma toasted me a glass. This is a drink, but the host does not invite, the guest does not drink. Wang Xiang smiled and said, I am not a big drinker, but if the old sir wants me to have a glass, I will. As she said that, she filled the glass in front of her. Feng Jui pressed her glass down. He smiled and said, you are trying to do something naughty again. When you get drunk, you will make a mess again. I think you'd better keep quiet. Yang Banshan said, How can this be? How can the host entertain guests and others interfere? Feng Zhu smiled and said, It's not that I don't let her drink, but she has no alcohol tolerance and will make a fuss after drinking. So I dare not let her be unrestrained. If Ban Lao must accompany you, how about I drink a cup for you? Yang Banshan said, no, she is hers, and you are yours. The wine you drink into your mouth will not go into her stomach. Feng Ju smiled and said, Ban Lao, aren't you her teacher? How can a teacher force his female disciple to drink? Yang Banshan stroked his beard and smiled, and said, Yes, I said so, but you and your wife did not admit it. Feng Ju said, It's not that you don't admit it, because Yang Banshan, the master, is a great writer. Wouldn't it be bad for the master to accept a woman who can't even read three characters as his disciple? Moreover, Yang Banshan accepted even such a disciple. Wouldn't he become a teacher in a kindergarten, teaching even the three-character classic and the hundred family surnames? Yang Banshan laughed and said, I have many disciples. If I have to teach them one by one, I will be exhausted. I just want to have a reputation and not treat me as an unrelated person. That's enough. While he was discussing, Wang Xiang had already left the table with the pot in her hand, walked to Yang Banshan and said with a smile, Okay, I dare not treat the master as an ordinary person. Here is a toast to you. Yang Banshan sang the lines of Kunk Opera and said, Wine is the master's food, and women are gentlemen and Confucian scholars. Female student, I accept you. Everyone laughed when they heard it. Feng Ju said, Ban Lao, this is something you can't say. Everyone thought Fengju didn't like Yang Banshan's jokes, and they were all stunned. Alright, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.